Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we are going to talk about the Detonics Combat Master again. But before we do, I'd like to shout out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, your contributions really, really help make this happen. Guns, ammo, everything costs money. These videos cost money to make. So, thank you all very much. Now, on with the matter at hand. So, the Detonics Combat Master was really the first of its kind. It was the first commercial subcompact 1911. It was the first commercially successful subcompact service caliber handgun. And um, they did things a little differently in those days. This was designed in the 1970s. And since I've been posting about the LDD project on social media so much, everyone keeps asking, what is this cutout at the back of the slide for? Well, that cutout at the back of the slide is for Pat Yates' thumb. I'm not kidding. <laughs> the designer of the Combat Master, Pat Yates, did not believe in cocked and locked carry. He liked to carry with the hammer down on a loaded chamber. No, this is not safe by modern standards. It wasn't universally considered safe by the standards of the time. But it was a different time, and people had different notions about safety then. So what he would do is when he drew the gun from the holster, he would put his thumb up here and put his finger in the trigger guard for leverage. Yes, I know that's a safety violation. The gun is empty with no magazine. So he would put his thumb here as he drew the gun and as he brought the gun up, he would thumb cock it before he assumed his grip. So, again, as the gun comes up and levels, he would thumb cock it. And Bob's your uncle. And it's a reasonably efficient way of doing it, but not great from a safety perspective on several fronts by modern standards. Let's have a closer look at this. So I do not actually have the proper kind of holster to show you this, but essentially he'd grab the gun, start the draw, put his thumb here, and then cock the gun as he brought it up. And that was his thing. So thumb goes here and cocks the gun as he brings it up. Yes, this is not in accordance with our modern newfangled ideas of safety. Wasn't so much a thing. And this cutout is in fact the length of Pat Yates' thumb. And they retained this when they went into production as both a useful feature, if you wanted to do like Pat did, and to give the gun a signature look, which it does. Now, of course, this also shortens the sight radius. Honestly, I've never particularly noticed the difference. This is not a long range gun. And at 25 yards, the difference in sight radius really doesn't seem to make much of a difference. And this information, by the way, um, comes from discussions with Peter Dunn, who was one of the people who rationalized the design of the prototype for commercial production. One only wishes their sales and marketing policies had been as rational, but that's neither here nor there. So now you know why that's there. It's because this is how the Daytonics do. So, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. If you want to support my efforts in a monetary fashion, there's a link in the description below to Patreon. And you toss Buck Month my way or something, and that will all help. So, I hope that answers the question, and I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.